Hi everybody, uh, you're on the first live episode of This Disc is Great with Steve and Nate. We've been talking about it for a while. We're actually going to make it happen, uh, which is exciting. Uh, I taught myself how to do all the video editing and it took a minute longer than I thought it would. Uh, we're going to uh, give people a couple minutes to, to join in so that they don't, don't miss out on the exciting debut episode. Um, so we're going to give people a couple minutes to get started. While we do that, Steve, did you get to play anywhere this weekend? Dude, uh, luckily I did get out before it got a little nasty. But uh, yeah, I actually went out to Hummel and I played the played full 18 out there. Uh, and as Hummel cart goes, sometimes you get humbled. So <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know, Hummel's our local course that's really technical and wooded. Like it's it's the course that makes you a better disc golfer, um, makes you actually hit line. It's a fun course, mm -hmm. but it's definitely tough. Um, so it's it's tricky and then yeah it, we got some nasty weather this weekend it snowed a couple days this week it got back into the 30s after spoiling us with nice weather so that's that's a bummer um i got out to our our last winter league on sunday and it was like 40 and windy wasn't the most pleasant conditions but came away with the the hot round i was pretty happy about yeah. that it wasn't a great round but <laughs> everyone else hey, played worse number one's number so. one <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, uh, how are we doing on viewers, Evan? We got there are about twenty people right now. All righty, uh, well, thanks everyone. Let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, you guys again are on the first episode of This Disc Is Great with Steve and Nate. Um, this week we're reviewing the Dynamic Disc Sheriff, uh, one of the new discs that they came out with about a month ago. Um, Evan is going to show those off to you. Uh, Steve, why are we doing this video series? Well, honestly, we have so many questions about discs ourselves, and then we have everyone who comes into the store, people email us, they're like, dude, I really am interested in having some new shot in my bag, be it forehand, be it backhand. Uh, and this is giving us the ability to do some field work with the disc and then be able to take that experience and tell the customers what we found out. Um, and we did all different types of shots. We're just figuring out like what what could be done with it? We're figuring out if this disc is great. Yeah, so that's one of the big things for me is I hate being in the store having a customer ask me, "Hey, how's this disc fly?" And I have absolutely no idea because I've never thrown it. Um, so this is honestly a selfish reason for me to get my hands on the plastic, try <laughs> it out, uh, so that I can answer those questions and just so I know if I want to get one for myself. Um, so one of the, the way we're going to do this series, since we're doing it live, you guys get to ask live questions, which is really <laughs> A feature you don't get out of a lot of review videos. So if you guys have questions about the sheriff, questions about things we talk about, ask those and we can answer those into the, the video. Um, so what we did is we went out and threw these um, a few weeks ago out in the field um, to get some really good idea. We threw several shots, taped them all, took some of the best ones, edited them up with some cool features so that we can show you guys how they fly, give you an idea. Um, we'll get into those videos in a minute. Uh, but that's how we're going to do that. We're going to throw it all previously. Our first three or four weeks are all on the same day. So you yeah. see a lot of similar video. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so Steve, just so people know, um, what's your kind of playing experience, throwing style, those kind of things, yeah. so they have something to compare to? Uh, well, I'm the only lefty at this store, so that's pretty sweet to get to throw some different lines than everyone else. But I throw... I don't try and throw as hard as I can. So when it comes to really high speed stuff, if it looks funny, it's because I'm throwing it funny. I'm not, I'm not out there to rip a disc in half with my power. I like to keep it smooth, just really use my body as best as I can. Um, but other than that, I really like attacking in a straight line. Like I take my big hyzers, but like I throw a lot of mid ranges where I just bump pump it up the gut and have it sit down real close to the basket. So uh, I'm really not super flashy when it comes to throwing, um, and I'm just really getting into the 12 and 13 speed discs uh, at the moment. So about how long have you been playing, Steve? I'm pushing two years, maybe a little more. Uh, I played some frisbee and stuff, but actually trying to get a disc to go 400 feet. Uh, that's, that's only been a couple years now. Uh, how about you, Nate? All right, so I've been playing disc golf since the summer of 2010, so about s almost seven years now. Um, I've been playing tournaments since that fall, and I've been playing the advanced division with um, different amounts of success over the years for about four years now, um, since 2013. 
Um, I Steve has a lot more of a finesse style than I do, like he was talking about. I've got a little bit more of a violent driving style, and I I have trouble disking down, so I'm always throwing it 100%, uh, um, so so that I don't screw myself up. Um, but so we got a little bit different throwing styles. I'm right-handed too, so I throw with the correct hand, which I think helps me. But uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's just kind of where we are. We're we're not neither of us are your pro players. Neither of us are mashing 600 foot. Eagle Simon Lazat drives. Right, yeah. Um, <laughs> on a good day, my power tops out around 425 to 450. Pretty consistently, I can hit 390 to 400, um, just so you have an idea of where these shots are going. Um, speaking of distances, we actually have a pseudo sponsor for This Disc is Great with Steve and Nate. Um, we've got UDisc on board. You're going to see what we're, what we're doing with them in a minute. Um, but, Steve, tell us some of the great things about UDisc. It's a disc golf app for your phone. Yeah. I've heard of UDisc before, but we actually contacted them and we were like, hey, we've heard a lot of good things about your app. We're interested in if you guys would help us out. You know, since we're doing this, we're going to need a way to measure throws and then kind of figure out uh, the consistency with that. And that's exactly what this app does. Uh, number one, you type in your area and it'll give you all the courses around you. Uh, you can even just go out of the United States and, and you can see the little pinholes of where the uh, courses are. Another cool thing with that is I can type in a zip code and it tells me the courses near it. So like if I'm planning a trip to say Colorado and I want to know if there's this golf course is close, I type in the zip code where I'm going and it shows me the courses within a certain radius of that, which is really cool. So it's all like GPS. So you, you give it a point, it tells you closest points to it. It's super crazy. It's crazy, but it's awesome. Uh, another thing with GPS and Wi-Fi and all that internet stuff, you can actually share. <laughs> you can actually share your scorecard. So it, you put you put in your score. Once your round's over, you press send, and uh, anyone who you're friends with, kind of like Facebook almost kind of thing, <laughs> but for disc golfers, it's super cool. So this is a scorecard from a couple weeks ago when me and a couple other guys from the shop went out. Um, so I kept score for everybody, and when we finished the round, I just hit it on their UDisc app that round. So they have that scorecard on their phone, mm -hmm. even though they didn't actually track it yeah. during the round. Yeah. So with that, what it also does is it goes through and like it tracks stats. Like I've got a bogey percentage and a win percentage that it gives me, or like average distance I throw each disc kind of a thing, which is really cool. A lot of cool, fun stats. But the main thing we're going to be using it for, let's turn you back on, um, is measuring our throws so we can tell you how far we're throwing each disc so you can get a better idea. That way we're not guessing, like, I think I threw it 475. Yeah. We can give you an actually more accurate number. So if you go into the UDisc app in your settings, I'll scoot up here, you click <coughs> measure throw, and then it'll pop up this GPS map. Uh, you got to give it. 10, 15 seconds for it to find you, and it might take us a while since we're inside. Um, but it'll bounce around for a little bit, um, and it'll tell me how closely accurate the GPS can be. Which, it's gonna, like I said, it's going to take us a minute, but normally you'd want to wait till it's a little closer, but I just can hit start, and it marks the point where I'm at. And it's usually accurate to within about 12 to 19 feet, depending on your signal. And then you walk over to wherever your disc landed, and you hit mark throw. You can even tell it what disc you threw. So let's say, since we're doing this, let's tell it I threw that first run sheriff that I have in my lap. And then it tells me how far I threw it, which obviously we didn't move, and because GPS wasn't accurate, it gives me a little bit of a different, um, different number there. But, so basically, uh, it uses the GPS in your phone, so depending on your signal, it's not accurate to the centimeter it's usually accurate within like 12 to 15 feet on the throw which isn't bad yeah that's which, for throwing trying to throw a 400 foot shot and you are within 12 feet give or take even like that's the difference between catching a limb and just barely slowing you down or just staying clean and getting a nice skip kind of thing so it's it's really you know it is what it is, but it's it's still it's definitely quite more accurate. it's definitely more accurate than you going. Eh, I don't know. Then you trying to put your feet one after another. All right, guys, we're getting some questions. Um, when and what are we giving away? 
So we are actually going to give away the two discs that we threw to make this review. Um, this is a First Run Sheriff that other than us throwing it is brand new. Um, you can't get these anymore, um, so this is actually a pretty cool thing we're gonna um, miss it. to have. <laughs> um, and then we're going to be able to give away this Fusion Sheriff. We threw it to be able to compare the plastics. Um, so we'll um, definitely do that. One of these is going to go to somebody who asked us a question about the Sheriff. So ask your questions so that we can answer those. Um, we'll get to some, we're going to probably answer most of those as we go through the video that are about the disc. And then we will uh, answer any questions that we didn't answer at the end. Um, any other questions we want to get to before we get to into the sheriff? I don't think so. Let's go. Cool. Cool. All right. Um, all right. So what Dynamic told us the sheriff is going to be, this is their description from their website, is that the sheriff is a versatile high-speed disc that is... On, oh, I'll actually just read it. Okay. okay. A versatile high-speed disc disc is hard to find. They're usually too far on one side of the spectrum to be a true multi-tool disc. Interesting sheriff dynamics, long hyzers, flex shots, pure hyzers, the sheriff will arrive just in time to protect you from the onslaught of bogeys sure to come without the right disc. Attack the course with a new with new confidence knowing the sheriff is standing with you to handle any problems that might arise. Steve, why don't you break down the flight numbers on this disc for us? Alright, so the sheriff is 13 speed, 5 glide, negative one turn and two fade. So those of you who throw Innova uh, destroyers, it's a little faster than a destroyer. It's got the same amount of turn, but it doesn't have as much fade. And uh, honestly, that's pretty much what I saw when I threw the disc. So, so the numbers are pretty true when we say it's 13, five, negative one, two. Yeah, out of the box, uh, for sure, I think the numbers are pretty close. Um, from what I was hearing about the disc before it came out, I was, I was hearing it compared a lot to a, a Latitude 64 Ballista, um, and which is, it's got pretty much the same numbers if you adjust for Latitude's usual extra over yeah. stability. Yeah. Um, and what I was kind of hearing, it was supposed to slot right in between Dynamics Defender and Dynamic Disc's Freedom, which the Defender is super beefy over stable, and the Freedom's kind of their flippier high-speed driver. So. By the numbers and by the description, it actually it slots right in between those two discs. So if the Defender's too much for you and the Freedom's not stable enough, this might fit right in there. Um, so we kind of talked about it a little bit. Steve, what kind of discs did you expect this to fly like? Like what, what discs yeah. can we compare it to? I, I haven't thrown a Ballista in a long time, but I know I've, I've got a few Destroyers that I basically only throw forehand because I, I don't have the arm speed enough just yet. So. The 13 did kind of scare me when, you, when we were going to go throw this disc. <clears throat> so I was like, okay, I really have to rip it hard. Uh, I'm going to feel funny if I don't get this thing to fly as far as Nate. So, <laughs> so I, have to, I have to try and throw it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I was a little scared, but ended up, I, I ended up really liking, liking the disc. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's fairly similar to, like I said, to a ballista, which I have tons of ballistas in my bag. So it's, it's pretty similar to that. Um, it's probably, out of the box, it's probably got a little less action than the ballista does, um, but it's pretty close. Um, it's also fairly similar to, like, I just got a brand new Metal Flake Wraith, and out of the box, they both flew very similar. Um, this has got a little bit more speed, um, a little bit more zip on it, but, but fairly similar. It's got a little bit of turn with some fairly solid fade out, which you're going to see in a minute. Um, Actually, yeah, let's just break down the video clips right now. We got uh, six, uh, eight or nine of them, just to show you, give you kind of an idea. Some different lines, some different release points. Um, so again, so you guys also know, we're going to be throwing max weight discs in all of our reviews, just to keep some consistency, so that it's not like a flippy disc that's lightweight compared to an overstable disc that's heavy. Yeah. Um, just to give you a consistent idea, we're throwing max weight on both of these discs. All these clips also will be the Fusion First Run Sheriffs. Not the Fusion, the Lucid first run sheriffs. Um, we didn't get to film any of the, the Lucid disc. We just got this in like last week, so we took it out yesterday to throw it a little bit. But we'll talk about how it flies a little different. Uh, but yeah, let's get to the videos. All right, so this is out at Elmwood Park here. Closer, Evan, you want to go ahead and sneak on closer so we can take a look at it? So on this shot, uh, I threw a pretty hyzer. I'm going to see if I can give you a release angle. Uh, I missed it. Um, so it came out of my hand pretty hyzer. It holds that hyzer pretty well, flipped up a little bit. I got a little bit of an air bounce there. 
but it hysered out pretty consistently like you'd expect. Um, a UDIS distance on that was 365. Um, and that's its ending point? Ending point. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> I'm going to be honest with you guys, it's going to sound like me um, making excuses, but we filmed this about a month ago, and it was probably the first time we'd gotten out and thrown oh, yeah. in a while oh, after yeah. our night. I still see the snow. Yeah, there's no right there. So, um, we these yesterday. We're probably getting 20, 30 feet more out of them than we were on this day. Um, but we've worked out some form rust and kinks. Um, but yeah, so pretty simple hyzer there. Uh, Steve, what's your first clip here? Uh, that's going to be the Lucid Sheriff. I thought I was throwing it on a little hyzer, but that's pretty much flat. And like I said, I just didn't really get enough on it. And it started the hyzer out real quick. But it's got so much glide. Look, it, it crossed probably uh, almost 80 feet from left to right before it finally hit the ground. So it, it really got some distance uh, de in depth as well as just holding that pure hyzer line. I'd say <clears throat> if, if I could get that straight, I would be hitting 350 in the air consistently over and over and over. But I just wasn't getting the right snap. Uh, but that for three three forty nine ended up uh, like if I had just had a big dog leg right, man, that that would be perfect disc for even throwing it as 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 flat as I did and staying in the air that long. I, I think uh, for me it wasn't my best shot, but I still like the distance. I'll tell you that. Yes, it's a it's a pretty easy like like their description says you it'll hold whatever line you put it on a lot. So you put it on a hyzer line, it's not gonna. If you put it super hyzer, it's not going to flip up and dump over right. uh, like the D6 we were throwing on that uh, same day. We'll get that review in a couple <laughs> weeks. All right, guys, um, let's, uh, let's do some questions to get some engagement here. Okay. Um, we've got about 45 people uh, here, so we're trying to trying to get a few more. Um, we have a question. Taylor asked, um, when the disc hits the ground, was it nose down or did it skip a lot? So, like, kind of what angle was it hitting? When sure. It um, on a lot of our if – you, if you take a look here, you kind of see on our flight line videos – um, and the hyzer lines um, that we just showed you, they're pretty. They're coming in with quite a bit of angle, so they got a decent amount of skip out of yeah. it. Um, I, I would say if it's hitting the ground at almost a 45 degree angle, this little jump, it wasn't. It wasn't huge. It, it, so it, yeah. it, this grass is pretty short. We were getting some decent skips, but it was just like one skip, and then it would sit. So it wasn't. It wasn't doing super crazy stuff. Um, I, yeah, it, even even the straightest shots, if if you keep it straight to hit the ground, it's really not going to skip that much. It's it doesn't flare really really bad. It All is right. a high speed driver, so it is going to skip a little bit. Yeah. So it's not going to die like a mid range, but yeah. Kyle was asking about forehand shots. Would it be good to use for a forehand? We will get to that. So be patient, Kyle, and we'll get that question answered. Um, and Roy wanted to know how wide is the rim? Is it different than other discs? So it's a Speed 13 disc. So it's going to be pretty wide. Um, it does feel like it in the hand. Like it feels like a big, a big boy driver. Yeah. Um, it feels pretty like in the hand width wise. It feels a lot closer to destroyer or a boss um, or a faster truss pass, a little bit wider truss pass, I'd say. Um, but yeah. He also asked, does it go? Wee, 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 <laughs> and you throw it. No, but you should. Um, <laughs> is the answer there? You absolutely should. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move on to our next clips. Um, so this is a little bit flatter shot from me. Um, I got it a little nose up, so you see it got a lot of height, but it flipped up nicely for me. Um, this is actually the farthest measured throw that we had um, when we were out there. Again, it flies up through pretty flat, so we got a little bit of turn out of it, and then it died out pretty consistently. Um, you can see I got that little bit of skip at the end. And that's, that was really a forward skip, so again, yeah. it's really not... Bouncing way up in the air. And what was the U disc distance on that? Uh, the U disc distance is 375, which again, um, for you who are just joining us late, we're using the U disc disc golf app on our phones to measure the distance. It's a really sweet feature. Um, they're kind enough to hook us up with free pro accounts for the store, um, so definitely want to shout them out um, and check it out. Totally worth the, I think it's like six dollars for the, a year subscription. 100% worth it. I'd have paid it if they would have given it to us. Oh yeah. But I'm glad they gave it to oh, us. Yeah. They're great guys. Um, all right, uh, we're going to get another pretty similar shot from Steve here. So this was definitely flat, uh, but I think that's how I finally got a little more on it. Yeah, 369, just a little more. Um, I thought I was going to turn it a little, 
but it wasn't turning for me. From for, with with being like Nate said, we just weren't really in the best disc golf fitness at the at the time. We haven't we'd been stuck in the warehouse for the past couple <laughs> of weeks, uh, so I just wasn't getting enough snap on the disc. But uh, when we went out yesterday and tossed. This was definitely going way straighter. I, I was getting really nice distance. I was, I was, I was, at the, I was easily going over 370 with yesterday. But uh, even for being rusty, that disc just wanted to glide. So, so flat, it goes nice and hyzer. You throw it hyzer, it's definitely going to stay hyzer. I could see it as something like getting out of trouble kind of disc, like, like, just like Dynamics trying to say. Or a lot of like woods courses that are longer where you need to throw different kinds of shots but actually get some stank on it yep. um it's good for that and this uh this last backhand clip i actually got some decent turn on this one like you can see i actually got over on top of it and that's part of it i was a little scared of, i heard it being a little flippier than um i heard a lot of people were heiser flipping it really well or like having it more turn than they expected so it's part of how we, we were Afraid of that a little bit, so I was didn't get on it as hard as on some of those throws. This one actually got on it. You can see a nice shot shape. It goes towards those trees over on the right there, and then consistently hyzers back out at the end. Um, the U-disc distance on this one is 370. I um, had a little bit of a tailwind, so it kind of killed the turn a little bit. But um, it's got some really nice potential. Um, if you if you hyzer, like I said, if you hyzer it, it holds the hyzer. But if you get it flat to a little bit of ante, it's going to get some nice turn and flex out for you. Um, this shot's just kind of fun. I missed the, the start of it, but Steve, what happened on this shot? Uh, I managed to catch one of our cones. <laughs> uh, we, you know, uh, we set up the cones, tried to show you guys a straight line where we're really trying to aim, and Nate was like, dude, are you even aiming at the, co at the cones? I was like, no, I'm trying to get as far as I can. And uh, he's like, dude, aim down the line. And then next throw, I caught, I caught the cone. I was like, yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, that's, that was our distance measuring before we got on with U-Disc, and it was just kind of, we're in a giant open field, so it gave us, gives us something to aim at. Yeah. And yeah, Steve finally aimed at the cones and sniped <laughs> the 350 cone. Didn't even need a U-Disc measure yeah. this one, but it was right at 350. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, so for whoever's asking about the flicks earlier, we are gonna, we're going to get into our sidearm throws now. Um, I actually really like this disc for sidearm shots. Um, the first one here, I'm throwing it with a pretty hyzer release. Um, holds a nice straight line and then consistently hyzers out. Got a little air bounce there. Um, it got a little skippier on my flicks. I got two or three bounces out of that. Um, on my forehands, I'm pretty much maxing out, mashing on it around 325 for my forehands. So 260 on a hyzer forehand isn't, it's pretty average route where I'm gonna be with any disc. Um, my forehand's not the strongest part of my game, but it's good enough to get me through, um, through what I need. Um, but yeah, again, threw it on a nice hyzer. It held that hyzer all the way. Um, skipped out. That's pretty straight. I liked it a lot. Um, Steve, what about your flick here? Well, I think this was one of the actual decent throws I had of the day. Yeah, you got it nice and flat. My, my forehand, 275 is... for, for that, that was actually kind of a hyzer flick, too. Yeah. So I'm actually really surprised as well as I was able to flip that. Um, I've been working on it, so don't judge me just yet. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I don't throw a whole lot of forehands. Just I like to throw the Annie's or, or uh, I flip something else. But um, this, these actually were, the Sheriff's was was a nice forehand disc. It has tons of glide for even as yeah. This as, is one of the better forehands I've seen you throw yeah, in general. Just as short as it went, it it felt effortless. With just because the disc has that much glide. And just for any of you who are confused by some of these flight lines, Steve is left-handed. Don't yeah. forget that. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, uh, this is uh, my last flick. This one actually got on pretty good. Got some turn out of it. You see there, flipped over nice for me. Then hyzered out solidly, uh, which is another thing about this disc. Like when, I, when you do flip it, it's hard to flip it and burn it. Like right. it flips and then it comes back for you real nice. Um, this one actually, my U disc distance on it was 300, which again is pretty close to the top end of my flick range in general. So we got some really solid distance um, out of out of that flick. That uh, again, like I actually like this disc personally more as a flick disc than I did as a back end. It just really fits in the hand nice. Yeah, like for it's that flick. for my power on my back end, it's easier to shape 
than say a destroyer or like normally I'm throwing something overstable and just mashing on it um, on a big Anheuser and letting it flex out. Right. This I can throw flat and just let it do its thing. Um, I like it a lot as a flick disc. All right, that's that's all of our videos. Um, so if we want to back up again, Evan, and we'll talk about it. So Steve, after all that, did the sheriff fly like you expected it to? Yeah, it totally did. Absolutely, 100%. It's fast. It's got a lot of glide. It's got some turn, but it's definitely got some fade. Uh, for me, I was scared of it. Until yesterday, I was still scared of it. I, <laughs> I, until I finally... I've been out a little more the past couple of weeks after we threw these first videos and I've gotten a little more loose, figuring out some stuff about my game and I'm finally getting the snap needed to throw something that's this fast. So if, if your game is power and really just mashing on this, I think this would fit well in someone's game. Like Nate, I, I bet you Nate is going to bag this uh, in the <laughs> next couple months, but uh, for me, it, you know, I liked it. I, I, I think it's a good disc. I, I think it's a good disc. Yeah, it flew pretty true to what I thought. Uh, at first, it was a little more stable than I expected it to be, but um, lucid plastic does tend to break in pretty well, so honestly, probably 40, 50 more throws in this thing, and it's going to have a, a little the turn that I was expecting it to. Hmm. Um, from some of the other reviews I watched, they kind of said that. Like, after they hit a few trees, it, it had a little bit more of the flip they expected. Um so I, I do like it a lot too. Like it's very controllable. You can throw lots of different shots with it. Yesterday I got it on a couple annies a couple times, big annies, and it held the Anheuser for most of the yep. route and then faded out real nicely. Yep. Again, I still didn't turn and burn it, but um, you can shape the shot you want with this disc more than more so than other drivers, I think. Um, yeah, what kind of situations or shots do you think this disc is best for? When you when you threw that big Anheuser line, I was thinking you got maybe some bushes in the way or you've got a nice tight tight line uh if you're playing in a tournament that's got out of bounds or you're along the lake that's like you just have to get far enough before it finally needs to to hyzer out i think that would be an excellent way because it doesn't burn on you unless you just rip you completely rip it too hard unless you screw it up yeah like, it's, it's any be, disc will do that <laughs> if you throw it wrong but this this disc will will take a lot i i think I think monster Annie's, but then I think also think monster Heisers, uh, just with how much glide it's getting. Um, and if you really, if you can get on it, I think you could have a nice 250 foot tunnel shot as well. Yeah. And I think like I, I think this is gonna be a great disc for those power arms on a heist, like where you can throw it, mash it on a heiser, it'll stand up just a little bit, carry out, and heiser back out. I think that's gonna be a great shot for it. I know Paige is carrying one of these in her bag, and she's one of the biggest arms in the women's game. Um, and she was throwing it really well at the Memorial. Um, I think it's like it's not like it's not gonna be a disc that somebody like Eagle or Simon are it's not stable enough for those guys. No. But if you've got that four hundred and fifty ish power, like I think it's gonna be for me it's for me it's almost identical to my bullet, honestly. Like it flies really similar to my yeah. ballista. Um, I can when I mash on it I can get it over four hundred. Um, I hit 400 with a couple times yesterday um, with the U-disc app. Checked it. Um, but uh, it's, it's got enough turn to get you that little extra distance, but it's going to solidly fade out. My problem with some of my high-speed drivers that have that turn is I can't throw it in the wind because it's just going to flip over. Oh, yeah. um, but I can throw this on a hyzer in the wind. It'll stand up, and it'll usually fight it out. All right. Let's go ahead and answer some questions. Um, yep. we're gonna, so we're going to give away one of these sheriffs to someone who has answer, uh, asked a question in this video. I'm going to read a few more questions, and then I will reveal the winner. Um, the next disc we're going to give away to someone at the end of the video, and um, still have their giveaway time for that. So, a few people that have asked questions mm -hmm. that uh, are eligible to win. Um, Chris Lewandowski wants to know, hey, Chris. can a noodle arm throw it, or what will it do? Um, this isn't the first disc I would recommend to somebody with low power, or for a new player. Um, it's going to be better than some of your beefier like defenders or gladiators or bosses. Um, it's if it's a nice step up from a beginner driver, but it's not something for super low power arms. What would you think, Steve? I I think unless you can hit three hundred on a regular basis, that this disc is going to be just too fast. I 
we don't want to give people discs in their hands that they're just not going to be able to throw or have a good time with. If you need something that needs to hyzer out really fast, yeah, it's, this would be a great disc for you. But if you're looking to, to get down the fairway, uh, put it near your basket, knowing how far it's going to go, I think this is, unless you found one that's like super light, uh, probably some fusion plastic, just something that's going to be super flippy, I, I think that's the only way uh, someone who, who isn't throwing fast enough will get that disc going. So I would say for you, I would think the noodle arm is going to is gonna not going to have a good time. I, I think to, for, for this disc to work real well for you, you need at least about 350 power. Like if you're not 350 consistently, you probably are wasting your time with this disc. Right. Uh, Joshua he says he wants to work for us. Um, hey, guess what, Josh? We are hiring right now for a sprinter. Um, so you can come and join us. Send your resume and cutter to careers at score.com. And we will check that out, and we'll let you know. Um, we are hiring, so you guys uh, move to Omaha if you're not <laughs> in the area and come work. For I us. did that; it's worth it. So yeah, Nathan moved uh, all the way over here uh, to come work for this store. Um, okay, a few more questions. Um, Garrett Wheeler and Trevor were asking how it fights the wind. Um, that's going to kind of depend on your arm speed. Um, I don't think Simon or Eagle or Ricky or those guys that are throwing like 600 feet are going to really want to throw this into headwind. Um, but like I said, for me, Heiser flipping it into headwind is probably going to be fairly consistent. Or my flick, but that doesn't have as much power, isn't going to have enough power to turn it over in the wind. Um, now, if you're, say, in Emporia in a month for the GBO and you've got 35 mile an hour headwinds, maybe not your best disc. Um, the disc we'll do next week, the Gladiator, is probably your better option. But to medium to for light to medium headwinds, it's probably gonna be, it'll be okay unless you're really ripping on it. If you're ripping it like 500 feet, then yeah, it's probably not got enough stability to fight out for you. Um, but what do you think, Steve? Is that pretty accurate? I definitely had my best throws with the disc into a headwind. Yesterday we were I was throwing in the headwind. He mm -hmm. he had the tailwind, uh, and it was it it flipped. I was it was finally flipping up for me. And that's why I was saying I finally started to like the disc, and that might have been the headwind, but. I finally got it to flip up, and, that, and, it, and it flew super far. I was like, oh, dude, this is great. Yeah. It's a good disc. If you've got like 350 to 400-ish power, it's probably a good headwind disc for you. All right. Um, we had a lot of people talking about um, if you preferred it over a katana. I don't know if it's similar or not. But. Um, it's def like the dynamic is freedom, which we talked about a little bit earlier, is fairly similar to an end of a katana. Um, and this is the step between it and a boss. Like, the Defender is fairly close to the end of a boss, the Freedom is fairly close to a Katana, this slides right in between. So if you're, get, if you're flipping your Katana a little too much, this disc probably fits right yeah. in there, it's going to be nice for yeah. you. Um, like, it doesn't have quite as much turn, um, or if, like, the Katana's got a nice giant Esker flight to it. This is a little bit more straighter, a little more controllable. Um, is that fairly? Yeah, I think? I think he's got it on the head. All right. All right, guys, the winner of... The pink sheriff. This is a first run sheriff. Can't get um, these anywhere anymore. Goes to Garrett Wheeler. Boom. Garrett Wheeler. Congrats. Um, thanks for Congrats asking the questions there. Um, if you email us at service at discstore.com or you can message us on Facebook, Garrett, and uh, we will get that disc out to you as soon as we can. So, Garrett Wheeler, congrats on that. Guys, thanks for asking your questions. Um, and we've got one more giveaway, and uh, we've got a couple things to talk about too. Okay, well, let's do the giveaway. Um, let's do, go ahead and do the giveaway now. All right, um, yeah. So, so how do we want to do this? What do we, how do you want to be creative? you want to do anything fun with this? Um, uh, I don't have any good ideas. Yeah, <laughs> go for it. All right, so let's go. I want to hear, um, what do I want to hear? I want to hear your favorite overall disc to throw. That could be uh, that could be an ultimate disc. That could be uh, any kind of disc golf disc. So I want to hear your favorite disc that you like to throw. So I'd like to see those comments coming in, and we can get um, some really cool ideas on what we like to throw. So you guys have the next minute uh, to comment. So I'm actually going to have a little timer here. Um, 
The, so comment, what kind of, we got comments coming in, S-Line, DDX, uh, G-Star, Turn. While they're, while they're commenting, we can go ahead and finish up with the last couple things we have to yeah, talk about. Yeah, go for it. Um, so, we're giving away this Fusion Sheriff. Um, we got out yesterday to throw it, so we wanted to compare the different plastics and how they are. So, Steve, how did the Fusion plastic compare to the Lucid Plastic Sheriff? I like the grip of the Fusion, and I love the flight. I definitely was able to flip the Fusion much easier I felt like I was throwing it harder than uh, the Lucid as well. So it has gone another 20, 25 feet farther than the Lucid. Mm -hmm. So uh, for my finesse throw, just being nice and smooth with it, uh, I like the flippier disc for me personally. Yeah, generally um, with Lucid Plastic, uh, is, Lucid Plastic is generally more stable out of the box um, and it beats in a little faster um, and fusion plastic is generally has a little more turn out of the box, but it holds its stability a little longer. So I would agree. We definitely were getting 15 to 20 extra feet out of the fusion plastic because yeah. because of that extra turn. Um, I actually flipped it over. I actually almost burned one out with the fusion. So it's got it has noticeably more turn than the lucid does. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Which is what you should expect out of fusion plastic in general. So if you if this if you got a few a lucid one and it's a little too beefy for you. Try out the Fusion. It's going to have a little bit extra distance um, with all of that. Or you can start hitting trees and let it beat in itself. Yeah. <laughs> um, bottom line on this, before we give a, do our last giveaway, is this disc making your back, Steve? Uh, it's so hard. I, I have to be honest. I'm going to say no unless it was to be the Fusion. But uh, So right now, I'm, I'm at no. It's just a little too fast for me. And for me, like, I, I like this disc a lot. It does a lot of great things. Um, for me, it overlaps too much with my ballistas. Yeah. Like, I, I, I could swap them out, like, do either or, but I try to keep a fairly consistent bag. Yeah, so, you like, gotta it's, keep, keep, it's a great disc. Same mold, different beat levels yeah, of like, beat. It's a great disc, and I could carry the ballista or this, but since I already have a stack of ballistas at home, yeah. <laughs> it's not pushing it out yet. I got you. But I like this disc a lot. It's very versatile. Um, great forehand disc um, check it out you can get it on our website use coupon code great deal for seven percent off your order um, throw some sheriffs in there I got a great selection of sheriffs right now I'm gonna get some more in in the next uh, week or so awesome disc I like it a lot check it out all right guys so the winner of the fusion sheriff is gonna be Kyle Forrest Kyle Forrest thanks for your questions thanks for your comments um, everyone, guys, uh, email us at service at diststore.com. Um, that's for Kyle Forrest and Garrett Wheeler. You guys claim your prizes, um, or you can message us on Facebook. So thanks for watching. Um, this disc is great with Stephen Nate. And hopefully, if everything goes well, we should have a new episode of This Disc is Great with Stephen Nate every Wednesday at 5 from here on out. Next week, we're going to hit the Latitude 64 Gladiator. Um, which is a nice, a really nice disc that I like a lot too. So be uh, check back with us next Wednesday around five o'clock, and we'll get that new review. All right, everyone, thanks so much. Uh, continue to comment and share, ask questions, and uh, Steve and Nate will get back to you with their answers um, on the video. So thanks for watching. You guys have a great day. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.